Bonus Higher Learning Bonus episode Wednesday Black History Month. I think this is the last one, right? Is this the last one? Is it the, yeah, is it's the last, last this, one. This the we last hope you guys one. have been enjoying them. We've been we loving giving you this extra content. We love this extra content. We love it. And here's the thing. Uh, we are joined today uh, by the star of the United States versus Billie Holiday, Miss mm-hmm. Andre Day. She plays uh, Billie Holiday. She's fantastic in this role. Fantastic yes. in this movie. We're going to get to her in just one second. But there is, we, we, we're going to do something a little, we have an update. Is a, a update, yeah. Um, and we have to talk about it. Matt James, a couple of days ago, went on his. It was it Instagram or Twitter, H? It was his Instagram, and he uh, he he gave a message to Bachelor Nation about all the recent upheavals and the recent troubles. Rachel, what did he say? Listen, if you want to read it, you can go to Matt James nine one nine on Instagram. Check it out. But basically, he doesn't hold back. And he addresses everyone from Rachel Kirkconnell to Is Chris it Kirkconnell Harrison. Kirkconnell or Kirkconnell? I say it both ways. Okay. Um, here on Extra, we say Kirkconnell. Uh, here on Higher Learning, we say Kirkconnell. Kirkconnell. It gives me a shout out in the um, in the statement as well. Just want to point that out. But bas- basically, Matt James is upset. And he's telling us that this is not how he expected his season of The Bachelor to go. He says it doesn't represent what he thought it was going to represent for himself, for the contestants of color, for the Black contestants of seasons past, and also for the viewers at home. And he basically says that you will hear more from him in the end. So he's not done. He's got more to say. Basically, he's saying all that he can right now. Uh basically within the confines of his contract. So he called upon the Black ancestors of The Bachelor, the contestants from years past. He called upon his ancestors, or the <laughs> Rachel Lindsay's of the world, Tasha. He's like, this is, this is what, and Easy, Riley, all the contestants. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the you know. It goes much deeper than that. You need the people for the last six months. I don't. I don't know anybody else. Who else was there? Who else is there? Who else? Is I there? can't go past my seasons because I didn't watch it before see, I, I was know. on it. it really so I, I, I don't know. Ooh. I don't know. But listen, I, everybody's been saying they wanted a statement from Matt James, and they got it. And I think this is huge. Um, it is an unpopular statement in Bachelor Nation because they don't want to hear you say these things. They want to protect the Chris Harrisons and and not all of Bachelor Nation, but there's a sector and the Rachel Kirk 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 Knells. So let me ask you this about Bachelor Nation. Bachelor Nation seems to be very pleasant and nice to me. What what, What portion of Bachelor Nation are these virulent racists that are out there? It, it seems to be, I haven't met this part of Bachelor Nation just yet. Because it's, they don't know you. Okay. Right, the people of Bachelor Nation who listen to this podcast are a different group. Ah, we got the cool batches. The other people are like, who, "What is higher learning?" Oh, okay, right. don't even know I have another podcast. Uh, they typically live on Facebook, and uh, most of them look the same. Well, like the uh, they're like the 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 fucking like the the Oakley glasses and the hats, the whole <laughs> nine. Yeah, I know those guys. <laughs> um, look. What 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 Mac what could Matt James do? I know I have a lot of fun with Matt James. What else? What was he supposed to say? This is all he could. This, it wasn't getting any better. I think than it was this. a great statement. I think it was a great statement. But you know what? He could have been silent. And I think the reason that people may be a little surprised is because when there was an issue before uh, with Hannah Brown, Hannah Brown, Matt, people looked to Matt James. People actually at said to they me, looked "Why to Matt James? Why? Because she was good friends with him, and he was best friends with the most popular guy from her." Was season. he on the show? No, but so he, what the hell then? Why would they he look might to as, him? He might as well have been because oh, this is giving you way too much Bachelor like background. But Tyler Give Cameron, it. Tyler Cameron was on Hannah Brown's season. Everybody felt like Hannah Brown should have picked Tyler Cameron. He's a very attractive man. You've seen him in the in the TikTok videos dancing with Matt James. I've sent them oh, to you before. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I know this. We covered yes. this on TMZ. He did was you? we did. That Tyler Cameron had uh, Charlie Neff. Shout out to Charlie Neff. Charlie Neff pitched a video of this guy dancing. I've been roasting Matt James for years. And you didn't, it didn't even just know. Start. I didn't even know. 
It was the Tyler Cameron guy, and he was dancing. They didn't have no shirts on, right? They didn't have shirts on. Boom! And they were they in- were they were doing the whole thing, and I and I lit them up on TMZ. I lit them up. I've been roasting Matt James. I knew it was something familiar about this weenie. <laughs> this weenie, this weenie smelled. I did. did it's it smelled. It was a familiar weenie it smell. It was a familiar smell. Go ahead, though. I'm sorry. You might yeah. forget a face. You never forget a smell. Right? Never forget a weenie smell. Never Corn forget dog. the smell. Well, Tyler Cameron and Matt James. Okay, so you've known about them even before he was the Bachelor. So most people did. They spent about a month together, right when COVID hit, called themselves the quarantine crew. Maybe this is when these videos came out. I'm not quite sure. But um, anyways, everybody know Matt James and Hannah Brown claim to be best friends. When Hannah Brown said the N-word, people were saying to me, why can't you be like Matt James? Why are you talking so much? Why do you have something to say? I told Matt this. Because Matt just put up a Bible verse and kept it moving. So a lot, there was a sector of Bachelor Nation that loved that that he did wasn't outspoken. He put up a Bible verse uh, and he kept it moving. So this is a different side of Matt James that people haven't seen yet. So I think people weren't expecting maybe another scripture reference. Right. And instead, he gave him this, a good statement. Look, Solid. You know why Matt James didn't come out against Hannah Brown? No, I don't want to know, man. I'll tell I you why. I didn't ask. Because he didn't want Hannah's reply. Hannah's reply was going to be like, Matt, you're the one who told me I could say it. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going like, to say that. I know. He had to come Stop. out. Like, and that had, that had gone wrong for him. He couldn't. He had to come out. He had said something. She was like, yeah, whatever. Matt told me it was cool. So I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> you yeah. imagine. Oh, Look. God. <laughs> Look, I'm telling Anyways, you. It's not, I, what I love the best about this is that he said, you will hear more from me in the end. Cannot wait for the finale because I Can't would wait. like to hear what he has to say. Matt Good James. You, Matt. All right. Uh, that wait, wait. Is... Are you going to ro- are you going to roast this apology? Are you going to give this uh, it was fine. Give this on, on the week? So it he's a fine. one. He's a one. Fine. Good. Good. It's, like, like, it's fine. One. Yeah, it's fine. Like he's coming out there. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, he's the. It's, he's the face of a franchise now. He's got to say something. He's the face of a show. He's got to come out there. It's fine. It's fine. I've been... We've all been under the gun. We'll see what happens when he pitches Rachel, Rachel Kirk and he gets kicked right the fuck out of Wakanda forever. He's like, <laughs> never come back. It's like, could never come back to Wakanda. Just kick him right out on the outside. You guys ever know in Infinity War, they got that big shield outside of Wakanda so nobody can get through that motherfucker? But that shield, yeah. did you know about that? Is if you're Wakanda, you can walk through there, right? It only knows <laughs> Matt James will try to walk to the seal and it's just an uh, uh, weenie alert. And you just can't get through it. <laughs> so, so anyway. All right, without further ado, let's talk to Andre Day. Yo, we are blessed and privileged to have a very special guest with us right now. Uh, I've I've seen the movie. The the film is the United States versus Billy Holiday. And let me tell you something. Riveting performance. One of the best of the year. I, I, I watch all of these movies, and this is a standout performance. Uh, as uh, Billy Holiday, Miss Andra Day is joining woo! us today on Higher Learning. <laughs> thank My you. Soror. Thank you. Thank My Soror. Yes. Man. Oh, hey. Oh, oh, oh I, got the wrong, I got the wrong colors on, but that's okay. I know. Are, I know. I was deltas? like, do I have any? And my sweatpants is red. Right. <laughs> there you go. So, so there Andrew, you go. Andrew, since you're a Delta, then let me ask you the first question is. Here it goes. I, I asked goes. Rachel this. Uh, how does it feel that the AKAs beat you guys to the White House? Like, how does that, <laughs> oh my God, see? why are you? <laughs> I mean, like, listen, what, uh, how, does that, how does that feel? <laughs> Listen, I think our sisterhood is about a sisterhood across the sororities and the unity and the uplifting of these beautiful black women in the community. So we are celebrating, we are celebrating our beautiful sister, uh, uh, VP Kamala Harris. I gotta be honest with you. Before we get on, I gotta be honest with you. I don't believe y'all. I went down. I don't, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't believe y'all. I went to Southern University. We talk about this all the time. I went to an HBCU. I know how this goes. And I'm, I'm glad that everybody is unified. I'm glad. But just, uh, I'm, okay. Because wait because wait till one of the Deltas get in there. Wait till one of <laughs> the old. Deltas get in there. Oh, it's and what? They're going to support us too. We were all exactly. the divine nine. Like, this, is, this is what we do. <laughs> that's what it's supposed to be. That's why, <laughs> right. that's why, no, that's why I had to bring it up. Because 
he doesn't want to give us our flowers anymore because of, because of VP <laughs> Kamala Harris. Okay, I had to say, I had to let you know while you over here praising her performance. This is what Deltas do. I like. I, I love Adelta. This is exactly. I love Adelta. Don't even get me. That's that's my. That was my jam. I love Adelta. I don't believe now. Right. Um, Andra, I know that you've been. You're first of all, congratulations on the Golden Golden Globe nomination. All right. Thank that, you, brother. I appreciate you. Thank that you that must, very much. That must be Thank crazy. You. Um, you're hearing yeah. all the superlatives about your performance. Um, have you watched the movie back? It is a very very raw. Thing to watch, and what are your emotions as you watch yourself as Billie Holiday? I, I don't, I don't know, because I haven't watched it back. <laughs> mm, I was wondering. That kind of says it. That kind of. Yeah. Here's the thing. I gotta tell you, I, I, um, I mean, pff, the idea of watching it when we came off, I, I gotta tell you, this, this shifted me and rocked me and changed me in a way that I. I wasn't prepared for, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm, I'm blessed by it, you know, but it, it did change me. And, and it, it was a little scary because, you know, coming out the other end of it, people would be like, okay, you got to let Billie Holiday go now. And, you, you know, you can be Andrew again. And I realized I had been her for so long. I had no idea who Andrew was. I spent three years of my life being Billie Holiday and I don't know. And I'm still, but God is great. And I'm still trying to figure it out. And I'm, I do feel like I'm starting to come to a place of realizing who I'm supposed to be in this season. But I think the other thing is I, my experience, I loved the experience on set so much so that I never wanted it to end. I didn't want to leave and I didn't expect that. And so there, I hadn't watched it yet because I felt like once I see the movie, it's going to be the final, you know, turning of the page, the final closing of the chapter. And I was, I haven't been ready for that to happen yet. Now I do feel like I'm at a place now where I want to actually see the movie. So I'll probably like in the next couple of days, watch it before it drops on Friday, you know? So I want to take it back because you talk, uh, you just said how you, you didn't want it to end, but you didn't want it to yeah. start either. No, you no, were running that's away very from true. this. N neither you mm -hmm. or Lee Daniels. Can you talk a little bit no. about that? Because my gosh, what we would have missed out on by not having you in this role. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. And what I feel like I would have missed out on this experience with Lee and allowing Billy, you know, Billy to take hold of my spirit, you know, was really powerful. But I didn't want to do it because, you know, clearly before this movie, I had never acted before. I'm, I'm not I'm not an actor, you know, and so. So that was um, that was a big part of it. I was I didn't want to embarrass myself. I didn't want to be terrible. And then I happened to be a huge Billie Holiday fan prior to the movie. And so I, I had this idea in my mind and I was a big fan of Diana Ross and Lady Sings the Blues. So as a fan of Diana's, I did not want to make Lady Sings the Blues because why would you try to approach, in a, you know, this this iconic project? And then as a fan of Billy's, I didn't want to remake it because it, I knew it wasn't the accurate picture of the government going after Billy Holiday as a fan. <clears throat> and so I had this idea in my mind that like I would do this role and that people would be like, Billy Holiday is so amazing. Oh, my God. Wow, wow. Wow. Oh, my God. Diana was so beautiful. Oh, wow. Audra McDonald on Broadway. Made... Oh, you remember that time Andrew Day tried to be Billy Holiday? Like, that's what I uh... kept like replaying in my head. So, you know, I am. Um, and Lee didn't want me to either because I'm not an actress, but we met. And I think we actually bonded over that mutual fear and that need to overcome. And I think we saw in each other just a desire to honor her and to do her justice and to tell her story truthfully. And so it made us sort of link arms and, you know, me trusting in God, him trusting in God and us trusting each other and, and diving into this project. You know, it's so interesting you say you're not an actress because, not an actor, because when I was watching a movie, the first thing I did was, uh, jump on Google to see what you had been in before. Because, <laughs> I'm seriously, there, there's no way in hell that anyone who saw this film wouldn't think that you hadn't gone to all the Juilliards and the Yales and <laughs> all of that because you, you that's, that's just how powerful the performance is. So, I, I guess a question I, I want to know is you say that you got to know that yourself as Billie Holiday, right? And you were there for three years. Mm -hmm. Why don't you yeah. think American culture knows Billie Holiday better? Because even though there was Lady Sings the Blues and we, there's been a lot about her life, I don't feel like there's been the cultural recognition and the cultural importance she's been given that that she deserves. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the truth of the matter is you know, there's no way to sort of go around it or parse words. You were never supposed to know, right? That was, <clears throat> this is the success of, of, though they were not able to successfully fully kill strange fruit, they were able to change the narrative of her legacy. That was the orchestration of the government, right? Of the FBN, the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, Harry J. Anslinger, J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI, the president, even at the time, you know, um, Billie Holiday was, a great, she was the great godmother of the civil rights movement. And that's not how we know her. And that's the biggest tragedy about her life. And then even thinking about Diana Ross, right? Everyone's really idea of Billie Holiday was Diana Ross and Lady Sings the Blues. We have to remember that like, it was a powerful movie. It was a beautiful movie and a black love story. And that's something we needed at the time. But Louis McKay, who was actually the technical director on that film and was Billy's um, husband unto her death and took her estate. He set her up to be in, put in prison. He set her up to be murdered. You know, he, he was working with the feds, working with the government. It's why his character in the movie is painted as this smooth, light skinned superhero brother. You know what I mean? Like, and so, um, and, uh, and so, and then with, um, we have to remember, though, also, it was a great feat that Diana was able to do what she did, that Barry Gordy were able to do what they did with the pressure of Louis McKay and with the fact that Harry J. Anslinger and J. Edgar Hoover were still alive and in power. You know what I mean? And so we were not supposed to know that they did not want us to know that Billie Holiday was singing Strange Fruit in defiance of the government, that they orchestrated a war on drugs to target her, to target black leadership, black influence, and that she was integrating audiences and that she reinvigorated the civil rights movement with her singing of the song along with the death of Emmett Till. And that um, our, we have the great civil rights leaders that we have today because they were inspired by her. So that's truth. That's too much truth. And we have a system of oppression that's built on lies. And so truth threatens to dismantle that. And so that they had to get rid of her in any possible way that they could. Are you nervous at all about how this film is going to be received? And then I'm also curious is like how your family and friends have reacted to you in this role. Um, I, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not really nervous about how it will be received. I mean, my goal is that it, it's received well, that, that, that the work that Lee put in is received well, the work we put in is received well, the great script by Susan Laurie Parks. I have a great love for Lee Daniels, for, for Susan Laurie Parks, for the production, for my entire co-stars, you know, and so I, I desire that. And more than anything, that Billy's holiday story is received, you know what I mean? And, and if, if the best thing that happens is that it causes people to start Googling Billie Holiday and say, why didn't I know this about her? What do I need to know? That's a blessing. And that's the goal, you know? And so um, I'm not really nervous about how it'll be received. I, I just, I just pray about it, you know? And um, I'm sorry, what was the latter part of your question? How, how have your f- uh, family and friends reacted to you in this role? Right. <laughs> my family and my friends are, they're so proud. Like everyone is super proud. They're all supporting. They're all excited. They feel the momentum, the energy. My family's reaction is hilarious because they're super proud, but it's like, you know, it's crazy. I'm not really, I'm not really a nudie person or whatever before all of this. And so there's a lot of crazy scenes in there. <laughs> my mom's is the funniest though. My mom just like almost, she was so excited and supportive of the role. But as I started to drop into Billy and started smoking cigarettes and just cussing and just being more sexual and being kind of more wild in my bed, she would be like, why are you acting like that? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like ma, you know, and she'd be like, Mm-mm. I'm like, ma, you know, I'm doing a movie, right? You just, it's just that you acting different. I'm like, what are you talking about, lady? Like, oh, no. she just would not let it go. So they've been hilarious, actually, in their reaction to the movie. Now, you didn't smoke cigarettes before this. I did not. No, did I didn't you get drink. Addic- did you get addicted to cigarettes during this time? A little bit. I, a little bit. You know what I mean? I was able to quit, though. You know, and, and I will say what I thought was something I was going to do mm-hmm. <laughs> was going to be... Um, like five months at the most, you know what I mean? Three and a half months for filming and then pre leading up to it. I thought it'd be five months of just doing this and then I'd be out and I'd be good. But then we had all these pickup shots and we had all of this ADR work in all of 2020. So I actually wasn't able to quit smoking until the end of 2020 because I wanted to just stay in that headspace. And they do help me drop because I don't have a frame of reference for my state of mind as a smoker, only as Billy, you know what I mean? So right. they make me feel like her. So what I thought would be five months turned into like a year and a half. You know what I mean? So I um, 
but I did quit at the end of 2020. I did. It's crazy that you asking me this because I just smoked, but it was for this video where cigarettes was a part of the, what we were doing, you know? Right. But, um, but I did quit at the end of 2020. And so, and so far I've been good. I've been cool. You know what I mean? I'll have random moments, but I'm, I've been chilling. So I'm, I'm trusting God on that, but yeah, I don't recommend it, but I had a piece about it for me. You really committed to the role, though, not just smoking and drinking, but lo- what you lost almost 40 pounds for the role. You yeah. cut your hair yeah. off after growing it for 12 years. I would have just oh, put really? a wig on like I got a wig on right Hold now. Out. I um, <laughs> I definitely would have. Could you talk a little bit about that? Because I know you've been open about the emotional journey of having to cut your hair off after growing it for so long and just kind of what yeah. black women go through in Hollywood with that and our attachment to hair and all of it. Yeah. I think so. Actually, that's a great question. It's the only time I've actually been asked that question on this sort of all of this, you know, run and everything. Um, But yeah, there was when I did it, when I cut off my hair, I knew Leah had asked me if it was something I was willing to do. And I was because I will tell you when I endeavored to do when I finally got over not wanting to do it and trying to run away from it. I mean, it was prayer that got me into it, you know, and so I had such a peace about these things and for me, it's like, I'm like my father, you know what I mean? It's I'm either in it or I'm not, you know? And so if I'm all in it, then I'm all in it. So I had a real piece about cutting my hair off, but it was afterwards. What would really get me is when I would see pictures of my hair. I There's one picture I have of when I had just taken these twists that I had and out and my hair was down to my butt. And then I felt it in my chest. I was like, oh, hold on. You know what I mean? But it made me realize I loved having short hair. I loved having short hair. And I'm like, why do we feel this need in order to be beautiful, to have long hair or to feel value? I understand that it comes from a history of our hair not being valued, our natural texture not being valued, us being told we couldn't grow our hair. That's not the type of hair we had and not knowing how to take care of it. But I also realized I was a little bit sort of a prisoner to it. I did not feel attractive without having, even though I never combed the shit in the first place, but (laughs) it was just the option of having it there. You know what I mean? But, and I realized I didn't feel. And so I'm like, no, my value has nothing to do with that. My value as a black woman has nothing to do with that. And so it was actually quite liberating. And I really actually love the short hair now. Mm -hmm. So there's a scene in the movie where Trevante Rose is laying down, he's listening to records and he doesn't have a shirt on, you know? And, you know, he's just laying there. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, 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 and, and, you know, here it is. You know, it's the pandemic. And, you know, we put on a little weight. You know, we, like, we're looking. Like, I'm a little fluffy. I want I you to know him. this topic has come, on, come up numerous times. Nah, I mean, the Andrew. dude was swole, this, this <laughs> nigga swole as hell. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, and so I guess my thing is, I want to know, like, throughout the course of this, did you ever see him eat any bread? Or did you, <laughs> did, like, did you, like, did you, like, did, was there ever, like, did you, like, did you, like, because I want to know at this point, because we've seen you know it, what? right? We, like, we, we, we've you know seen what? it for years. You know what? Let me tell you something. I'm in it with you, Van. You're right. I didn't see that nigga eating. <laughs> no way. I'm telling you. I know it. I can I look at it. I was like, I was like, I was actually eating lemon heads when I was watching the scene. I was eating lemon heads. I was like, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I'm eating lemon heads. I'm looking at them. I'm like, yeah, nigga, but you ain't got these. Though. I only saw him eating a couple times. You're right. I'm real suspicious right now. No, I mean, he ate like a couple things, you know, on set. But you know, it's interestingly enough, everybody's like, wow, he's in great shape. I'm like, that's a small tray. Like, that's Trey small. He lost like 25 pounds, I think, or something for the role. Ah. Well, I don't know. I spent most of my time on that. Yeah, Yeah, of course. Like, he's an athlete. So the reality is, the reality is, none of us are going to work as hard on our body as he does, period. You know what I mean? So it's just, I accepted it, and I was jealous of him at first, and then I moved on. Mm. So I was like, it's fine. To the point of his character, to the point of his (laughs) character, do you see parallels to, uh, I'm sure you've been asked about this, to another movie that's out right now, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. It, mm-hmm. it, it, uh, talk a little bit about how important his role is in this movie as kind of being the guy that's being twisted up and manipulated by the government to go in, to go big game hunting against somebody that's as, as uh, important as Billie Holiday. Like what, t- talk a yeah. little bit about his performance. Yeah, and, and it's a great tie actually that you just put together with that because the reality is what we saw um, in Judas and the Black Messiah, Jimmy Fletcher was actually the genesis of that. So that was sort of that. I mean, 
essentially ah, not really right. This practice yeah. really goes back to that plantation. Sure. But since the abolition of slavery and segregation and Jim Crow and, you know, all of this and racial terror in America, he was actually the genesis. So he was really one of the first black FBI agents, if not the first, um, and not even really, I hate even to use the term black FBI agents because they really just use them as a pawn, you know? Um, so it's super important for people to know, uh, you know, he was, they, once they constructed this war on drugs, right. You know, that was one of the first things they knew they couldn't go into the community. So the idea was to manipulate as they did sort of the divide and conquer mentality on plantations. Um, you know, the overseer mentality was sort of, you know, um, house slave mentality, you know, uh, so it was sort of manipulate them into feeling like they're making a future and they've got an opportunity sure. and they've got a shot and they can make a life for themselves. And really Jimmy Fletcher's character, even though people go, Oh, well he betrayed her and he, but he was actually a good person and was trying to do what he thought was right. You know what I mean? And so he saw drugs ravaging his community with unreal, not realizing that the government had really pumped them in. Um, and so he thought, okay, let me do something to get in and to help and to further my career and my life and build a life. And so uh, you know, he was really the genesis of that, the way he stopped her and the way he followed her. But I love that he ultimately ended up falling in love with her and realizing, realizing that he was being used as a pawn. You know, I can't imagine how painful that was. And so, and I love that Billy's reaction to him, though she's angry at him for going to prison, she's very, very forgiving. She's very willing to let him in again because she sees past just his action. She sees the the sort of puppeteers behind him and that his desire is actually just to do good, you know? So it's, I think it's important to know about these characters because this is a practice that the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, that the FBI, that the government has used to infiltrate so many of our Black leaders. And the other thing I want to just touch on with that is that, you know, they're the first agents to, to be the first soldiers in the war on drugs. But the, if you, the one thing I've been explaining to certain people, especially like white people who've been interviewing me is like, I'll explain it to you like this. We've had multiple wars on drugs. We still have drugs. We do not have most of our black leaders anymore. You know what I mean? And that's what you need to really, really understand to understand the full picture, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about the music in the movie. Was it hard for you to change your voice, uh, mm. you know, to do some of this music? And then, uh, yeah, no, yeah, just on that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a combination of things. You know, I had to, um, <laughs> I, I worked with a great dialect coach Lee connected me with, and that was a conversation Lee and I had early on. I knew I did not want to do the role if it was going to be my regular speaking voice. And fortunately, Lee was like, it had, we have to have Billy's voice. We have to have her voice. And it has to be, he would always say this, it cannot be an impersonation. It has to be an interpretation. And so he connected me with Tasha Smith, my acting coach, who was amazing. My dialect coach, Tom Jones, who helped me to understand what that meant, you know. And so I had to, you know, there was the muscle memory, right? I had to train the muscles. And as a singer, we know kind of how to work with these. Um, so I had to, Billie Holiday, I speak deeper in my chest. Um, and Billie Holiday speaks actually from sort of way up here behind her, her head and behind her ears. And then there's all this gravel that it has to travel through. And, you know, the range of her voice goes, you know, so much. And so I had to sort of train the muscles and hold them in a certain place. And then once the muscle memory came, I was able to sort of sit in that. And then I, I had to stop taking care of my voice. Honestly, I had to not just find the places she spoke from, how she breathed, why she breathed, but I, I just stopped drinking hot tea. I would just drink, you know, ice cold drinks. I would um, not cover my throat and I would not cover up when it was cold out and I would just be loud and not sleeping. And I drank a lot of gin, <laughs> and, uh, which I don't, I actually don't drink. So that was definitely another piece for me. That was a big one. And then the smoking cigarettes, you know, I had to earn the gravel that she had earned over the entire period of her life in a very short period of time because her voice is a beautiful character within itself. So um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of work, but it was worth it. I, I think it was worth it. <laughs> I'll know when I see the film. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Andrew, it was worth it. It sounds like this Thank was a you. very healthy experience for you. It was like, great. Uh, I recommend yeah. this to everybody. <laughs> like, it's, it, 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 it seems like... Would you say that playing Billie Holiday was the most unhealthy experience of your life? Yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> mm -hmm. Between starvation and cigarettes and alcohol and not sleeping for days and days on end. Um, you know, yes. Being cold, sick, whatever. <laughs> yes, yeah. it was. But it was wow. worth it. It was the most physically unhealthy. It was the most spiritually healthy. 
mm-hmm. that's why I you know, feel great about it today, you know. Okay, last question for me. Do mm-hmm. you have the acting bug now? Will we see you mm-hmm. in other things? She just has no choice. What are you talking about? She'll be okay. in the... Let her, let her, let her. No, I'll answer, no, I'll answer, no, no, I'll answer right now. <laughs> you know, when you just said that, a bunch of agents and guys just looked up from their <laughs> iPhones. They're like, yeah, we already got a book in Jurassic <laughs> World Part 4. Like, yeah, we got, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, like, a bunch of people going like, hell yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not the, a bunch of Asian guys. A, a bunch of Asians, a bunch of Asian guys are like, yeah, we got her in all the things. She's Black Panther Five, all of that stuff. She's about to do all of this. Yeah, it's, it's mainly my age. Not right. Black Panther Five, not the Rocky series with Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, she's like, of course. I say it's probably mainly my age looking up. Like, you better answer this question right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah. I, you know, I did. I will tell you, it's funny because I feel like if Lee and Tyler and Trey were here right now, they'd be laughing their ass off of me. But because on set, it was funny. They were like, oh, man, you're going to be so amazing. And people, I was like, that's cool, nigga. If this one role next to me, you know, being amazing, great, because I'm retired. Definitely. That is really how I felt. But coming off the heels of that, feeling like I'm in a healthier place and seeing kind of the other side. Um, yeah, I, I'll probably do maybe just a just a couple more, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Um, but really more than anything, I have a desire to tell stories. You know, I, I, I just feel like I've started writing actually, and I want to co-write and, you know, direct and produce with, with, you know, sort of co-do these things with, with great talent in the business and, and work closely still with my castmates and with, you know, we, they all, they send me scripts and things they're working on and I share shit with them all the time. And so just to create a community, but I feel like we should be seeing in the next, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, an incredible saturation of black stories, of marginalized people's stories, of LGBTQ plus stories, of women's stories, of, you know, of different culture stories, because these are, why wouldn't we, you know, we, 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 these are the stories that have been intentionally kept from us. And so in order for us to move on and be healthy as a society, um, we got to pop the top. We need to, the world, the internet went crazy when it found out Beethoven was African, right? Or hidden figures that three women were responsible for getting us to space, you know, or programming the first computer or that a slave Lafayette was, it was his brave act and infiltrating the enemy camp that actually netted us our independence as a nation, right? We don't know about shit like this, you know? And so I think it's really important to tell beautifully artistic, but like factual based, you know, stories. I call it sort of the, re- the 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 genre of conscious you know historical revelation you know what I mean and that's I feel like um, so I have a desire to tell our story so that bug has definitely bit me for sure and this is my last question we really appreciate you making the time once again the performance is absolutely spellbinding like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad you're getting all your flowers sister so mm-hmm. there's something that that we talked about on the earlier podcast because there's a through line to all of these stories of of the destabilization of movements. Mm. And that through line, mm. I'm gonna come at you from left field here, is J. Edgar Hoover. It, whether or not yeah. we're talk, whether or not we're talking about Judas and the Black Messiah, whether or not we're talking about uh, the United States versus Billy Holiday, we're talking about the life of Dr. Martin Luther King, all of this, this, this stuff. I said on an earlier podcast that I thought that J. Edgar Hoover's name should be taken off of the federal building uh, in Absolutely. Washington. Um, because he, to me, is a cultural war criminal. I was wondering, Absolutely. after playing this part and getting into how this was, what you think about a movement to take J. Edgar Hoover's name off of the federal building? Um, I, I 100% support that. And, and that's one of the huge things in like my creating of content. So it's funny that you bring that up. My creating of content, that's a huge sort of like uh, 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 point of it is to really, you know... it. To me, when you say we want to build a monument or we have a statue or we have his name on the on on the on the Capitol building where we have this, it's the same as saying, oh, as well, should we put Hitler's name up there? Why would we do that? Um, because it was it was just the brilliance of subtlety. And, and I would say I don't want to say brilliance, but really how diabolically genius it was at being so subtle. And, and as you said, sort of dismantling our our community and everything that he he hated. And so, yes, I, I think to me, he is the Hitler for black people and for people of color and for marginalized communities in America. He's responsible for so many deaths and, and, 
And, and I don't think people really understand the scope of that man's power when he was alive and his power, his grip over the world now, you know, but this is not just America, this is world leaders, you know, that he had in his pocket. So, I mean, and, and he did it brilliantly. You know, it's like, <laughs> to be honest with you, I understand why people go, I compare him to the devil, right? The devil wasn't cast down because he was a booga booga monster. The devil was cast down because he thought he could be God and be better than God. And he has been able to successfully cement himself in this nation as a hero and a pillar of righteousness and civic duty. And, you know, and the man was a demon, you know what I mean? And so I a hundred percent agree with that. I, that's one of my, um, actually one of my biggest passions is, is to see that happen and to see the undoing of, of not to not tell the truth about him, but to tell the truth about his legacy, you know? Mm. 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 Yeah, Andre Day. So, uh, coming up, Black Panther six. Uh, we're also because <laughs> remember she was already in five, and now That's we're right. all she was six. already in five. She's already in five. She was already elevated to playing King T'Challa. No, <laughs> yeah, you know the yeah, coming put, up. She, yeah, put it out there. Put it out there. <laughs> you right? Um, you right? Uh, I am excited for all the twists and turns that your career is going to take. And once yes. again, uh, you know. I know they're, they're, the Golden Globe nomination is is out there and there are more uh, accolades to come from this role. I personally expect mm-hmm. you to be nominated for something else uh, as well. <laughs> that that other award, I think you're going to... Uh, Put gonna it out them. there. We just told her to do it. Put it out there. I think she is going to get an Academy Award nomination for Best <laughs> Actress. Uh, I, thank you. I received I that. sincerely I do. I've seen all the movies and there's some great performances. But this performance, the fact, let me just talk shit real quick. The fact that this is your first movie, like, yo, <laughs> like, for real, like, you were, you stepped into her. It's really, really amazing. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, it was a delight to have talked to you, and we're, we're glad to have had you on, on the show today. Thank you so much, Andre. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yes. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank y'all. My blessings. Let's do this again. This person's I know. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Minus, we'll keep COVID at home. <laughs> <laughs> bless y'all take care bye